Wow, it's Terrence Gangster Williams, aka OG Giggity. This one here was on my mind. I had to get this one to y'all. This is mainly for all you steppers out there. This is for the steppers. For the young, wild steppers, even for the older ones. Because I want y'all to understand this. Trouble is easy to get into and hard to get out. That picture that I have for the thumbnail and this picture that you're about to see, it's the last time I was on the street with my two best friends. I mean, we we was young, man. We we had uh we had we had to decide to go robbing, and uh we had went in the 13th war, actually in BG Hood, on Valens and Magnolia. We caught boy, uh, young man, going you know walking past by the store. It's nighttime. Upped on him, you know, took all his money from him. Made him, you know, take his shoes off, check the shoes, cause dudes are how they did money their shoes back when I was coming up. So uh let me tell y'all what's crazy though. When we as we when we jacked the dude, my homie Mike Mike, the light skin one, the one that's standing up uh next to me. Mike Mike's the one standing up next to me on the picture, and George, what we call G Money, he's the one that's kneeling down. Um, he uh he had wound up getting the buddy, right? So uh, after we ride a guy, we jump in the car. We jump in Mike Mike's car. Back then, he had a a, a blue Park Avenue. So uh, we had we we some kind of way. Uh, oh, it was George G Money. His girl had told him that they had a little uh, a high school dance on Canal Street at this uh, at this hotel. So. Um, we go on Canal Street, we go to the, to the dance, right? So we get there. We waiting on Mike Mike to split the money, right? So Mike Mike called himself trying to pay our way in the dance. And me and John said, say, oh, 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 man, give us our money, man. We need to split that, man. You around here trying to hold the money and all this old stuff here. He just started laughing. But uh, we ain't hit that much. We hit, but maybe it was like about good. 1200 anywhere from 1200 to 1500 somewhere but now it wasn't a lot of money well back then it was a, you know something for us we were young and um you know freshly we went off in the dance and um you know we hung out but uh the last time i had got a chance to hang out with them that was february of 1992 and the reason why i'm bringing this up is because they got locked up April of 1992. What was it March? March or April of 1992 for a homicide they didn't commit. Now the third war was beefing with the tent war. And it was back and forth. Tent war come ride through the Magnolia. They'll ride through the Melphamine project, do their thing. And, you know, Magnolia go ride through their project. Melphamine go ride through their project do their thing, you know, because uh, actually in that war, a lot of lives were lost on both sides. So, uh, so what happened, someone someone uh, went through the St. Thomas Project, the tent ward, and uh, cut loose open fire. Well, one guy was killed, one guy was hit up. One of the guys was hit up, I was actually in juvenile jail with him, Teddy, out the tent ward. So, uh, I don't know how he come up with the idea that uh, Mike Mike and George did this, but he pointed them out. Now, uh, 94 come around, I had wound up coming, coming back to the Paris for a homicide, and I was on a tier with Mike Mike. One of Mike Mike uh, homies of the mail come in on a tier. So uh, Mike was the tier rep at the time, and I was hanging out in the hallway with Mike Mike. Tear up means someone who runs the tear, who feeds everybody their food, uh, make sure the tear be clean and all that stuff. So uh, I'm hanging out in the hallway with my, with, with my big bro. So Mike tell the homie, all this project, man, why you didn't send me some money while you was out there getting that money, hustling and stuff? He was like, man, I was trying, you know, he came with a little story. So we hang, you know, we just, he just telling us about what's going on the streets. He said, man, you know they got y'all down bad. He said, man, that was such and such, such and such, and such and such. And me and Mike look at each other. 
But at the time, you know, ain't nothing we could do about it. So they go to trial, get found guilty. They got found guilty in 1994 when it got shipped on to Angola. So the guy that was in the parish with us who had told him what happened, he gets found guilty and gets a life sentence and go to Angola. So now while they're in Angola, they're like, man, you might want to take your charge. He's like, no, nah, man, if I take that charge and I beat this license, I'm going to be stuck with that. Man, I ain't taking that. So, you know, they've been fighting. Uh, Mike Bank was the heavyweight champ at one time in Angola. And uh, he had knocked the dude out. And uh, one of the, you, know, the little, you got family that could come and watch the fight. And, you know, you got uh, staff members and stuff that come and watch the boxing match. Because in our state, they travel from uh prison to prison boxing and fight for the belt and stuff. So uh, Mike might knock the guy out and uh, they was cheering for him so he blew a kiss. Uh, uh, he kissed his hand and blew a kiss at the, uh, at this uh, white woman and he didn't know it was the warden's wife. So they locked him up, put him in a hole and took his belt so he got he just stopped fighting. But he he trained guys to this day that's, that are in Angola. Um, G. Money, George went on to be a prison uh, lawyer. Whereas when you get a write-up before you go to the kangaroo court, you know, he'll see what your write up is and he'll he defend you to try to get you get you charged throughout or get you less, you know, whole time or whatever good time he can get for you. That's what he do now in Angola. Um, I just spoke with him recently. You know, um, I have a picture of him too that I'm gonna post so you ought to see. He's still in good spirit, they you know, they doing good, they okay. Um, things looking good for him now, you know, with all these new laws that has come out. But um, they have been locked up for 30 years, man, for a homicide they didn't—they actually didn't commit. And once they get out of prison, this life sentence get overturned. Mike Mike have to go to the feds because he got caught back in the days, back in the, back in February, remember, not, not February, uh, I want to say April around that time, for all the guns that we had. He wound up going to the Fed, uh, but the state had him first. Well, the Feds had him stay. I don't forgot. I don't know how it went, but I know he had to go through ten years once he get that license back. So this man, this man has did thirty years. Ain't no time credit circuit. The Fed want all theirs. So once he leave Angola, now he got to go over to the Feds and do ten years, eight years off the ten. This man got to go do eight years off the ten years, man. So for all you steppers out there. That's doing that stepping, that's wilding, man. You know, there you know how people always say, man, ain't no innocent people in jail. Some people say, man, they, they got people in jail who really ain't do crime. I, I actually know someone that has been in prison, two people that's been in prison for 30 years that really didn't commit the crime that they are doing time for right now to this day. Right now to this day, they call me, I talk to them, you know, so hopefully you all can get it together, man, get it right. You know, because, uh, like I say, it's easy to get in trouble, but it's hard to get out, man. And we were young. We were wilding. Uh, you know, we were wilding out uptown, you know. And it's crazy because whenever your name ringing, no matter what happened, man, you could be with the president having lunch. Oh, such and such them did it. They're going to scream your name because your name is ringing. Now, you don't have to. You could be so far gone, so far some, you know, far away from the crime, but your name gonna come up because your name is ringing, and and, and then you have those situations that happen. I'm pretty sure they happen with some people that you all who listen to this might know, you know. But um, I just wanted to uh, drop that on you all. You know, I'm at work, six o'clock in the morning, and I thought about you all, so I wanted to show the love. So y'all know the motto: say no to drugs, stop the violence, let's put the guns down, and let's reach out to this area as you. And thank y'all for hanging out with me. Thank y'all for uh, tuning in. You know, much love. Wow, I'm out.